On another overseas note, some of you may have seen the, uh, the first of a couple of emails from Brother Kumar, and uh, where he mentioned that one village happens to be a village that I've been in twice, and uh, so it's, you know, kind of makes it personal. But you had, he you had some believers there, and you had some heathen villagers. And the devil stirred up the heathen villagers to accuse, these, to, to accuse two Christian brothers of, uh, of witchcraft. They killed them, and they burned them. And uh, so, of course, when we got the first email, it had just... He just kind of heard about it, and it was, he was still, Brother Kumar was still, you know, basically in prayer mode, hadn't told a whole lot of people there. But we, we, there is another message that will be circulated where he sent pictures of a memorial service they had. I think they planned for maybe 100, and 1,000 came. So uh, it's just something to realize, you know, to pray for them, to realize how blessed we are in many ways. But yet, see how God triumphs. Because I, I guarantee the two men involved, they're not hurting a bit. They're, they're with the Lord. They'll never, they'll never see another bit of this earth. Praise God. What a, we cannot lose with the Lord, folks. It's amazing. Um, I don't know. I have, a, I have a burden and I have some things that have been on my heart in a very particular way the last few days. And uh, if this isn't the Lord, it's going to go really flat. But I just, I trust the Lord is in this and that he will bless. Turn, if you will, to 1 John chapter 1. I've had so many scriptures, I don't even know where to begin. But let me, uh, let me read from this. One of these scriptures has already been quoted this morning. But anyway... Uh, John, I'll, I'll just pick it up in verse 5 of 1 John chapter 1. And the Lord's beloved disciple writes these words. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive, our, forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. You know, we were talking, some of us the other night, and Joel expressed something that's, uh, that was, I believe, right on the money, that we have a great need in our individual lives and in this place for a great deal more of the reality of, of God and his kingdom and his power. We certainly, if we look into the scriptures, we don't, we, we, and compare with what we see as, as blessed as we are in many ways, uh, it doesn't really compare much, does it? And, uh, you know, I wonder if there's anybody here that actually thinks that God is reluctant to bless his people, that he is somehow standing up there with his arms folded, looking sternly down at us with this great big divine checklist. And, you know, okay, they're all right here. Whoops, they messed up here. No, you know, it's, it's like it's, we got to qualify or, or he's got to tick off his list. I'll tell you, it's not that way. We have a God who longs to be real, who longs to be who he is in our midst. And I think sometimes we almost emphasize certain things and I think it's I think it's possible that to take it in a wrong way almost as though God is a divine vending machine and if only we will learn the correct buttons to push and uh, we will you know we will you know spiritually hold our mouth right you know pray enough do this do the other that somehow we can get the the, the divine blessing thump 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 to come out out of the machine and we, you know we'll go on about our business but God is not a divine vending machine he is a person he is God and he, we don't use him he longs to use us 
We don't relate to him on our terms. We relate to him on his, or we don't relate at all. And I know that we have rightly emphasized the need to pray and to seek God and to cry out to him for revival and for reality in our lives. But ever since that conversation, I have just had a, an overwhelming sense that we're, we're missing one of the key, if not the key ingredient in all of this. And uh, I'll just refer to a scripture uh, that you may be familiar with, and you don't have to turn, but you can look, at, look it up in Isaiah 59, the first couple of verses, where Jesus says through the prophet to the Israelites, says, my hand is not short that it cannot save. Neither is my ear dull that it cannot hear. But your sins have hidden his face from you. And, and, and he says basically the same thing again. Basically, God is looking, was looking down at his people and saying, look, I can do anything that's needed, but there's a problem on your end. There's sin. And, and unless you repent, I'm, you know, I'm, just, I'm going to stand back. And this is one of the key things that, I, that, that God's people somehow, all, you know, often in their seeking after revival and this and that and the other, somehow overlook that. It's almost like, well, we're okay. We just need to change our activities a little. We need to, maybe we need to change our attitudes. Yeah, we need to really give up a greater priority to prayer and to seeking God. But basically, we're okay. I'm not so sure. If we were what we ought to be in God's eyes, I believe God would be busting out of this place. We need to be honest. We need to look in the mirror and say, God's hand is not short. There are things in our lives that God wants to address that are holding back things that he would otherwise give us. You know, I remember many years ago, hearing a message that Brother Thomas preached, and I guess he preached it a short time before I had become a part of the work. And best I remember, the title was Cleansing Before Anointing. And I don't know if I'm mixing up two messages or not, but I do know that there was one message he preached in which he looked back to the experience of Joshua when they were about to enter into the land. And, uh, you know, God had brought them through Moses to the brink of the land, but God wouldn't allow Moses to go over. Why, by the way, did he not? He had sinned, hadn't he? And he'd done it in a very public way. There had been a real act of, of dishonor to God. And so, and so now Joshua's got the reins. God has anointed him and commissioned him, said, don't you be afraid. You go forth, I'll be with you. But one of the main things he gave to the people to do, he told them, he said, uh, in, the, in the King James, it says, sanctify yourselves. For the, tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I think the NIV uses consecrate. It's the same thing. There has to be a separation. And the people of God. Uh, there's another article coming out in the paper. Uh, the MCM, it's, it's actually gone to the printer, or at least it's gone to a server for them to retrieve. That's the world we live in these days. But anyway, I, I pointed out that in one of Paul's letters, he addressed his readers in this way to the, saint, or to the people at the church at such and such a place. And he says two things, loved of God and called to be saints. Now, I thank God for the love part. If it weren't for that, we'd be in a lot of trouble. But the call is not a, you know, a wishy-washy, sentimental kind of thing. It is a call to be saints. And, and the word saint is, is related to sanctify and holy. And all of that really all comes from the same root. And I'll tell you, God has not just called us to believe in Jesus and live our lives and go to heaven one day. He has called us out of the world and has separated us unto himself. And I don't know if we, we fully appreciate just how amazingly holy and pure this God is and what it is that he's looking for from his people. And, and I'm glad it's not perfection. You know, I, I, I'll say this early on because I want us to hear what I'm saying and what I hope the Lord is saying 
uh, with a balanced view of this.